Selfishness is when everything aggravates towards you, is all about you, and that's how the devil works. The very opposite of selfishness is the love of God, where others are preferred before you. And this is where I have issue with people who preach this so-called American dream, which they call the prosperity gospel. I trace that prosperity gospel historically. The founder of that prosperity gospel, the mover and shaker of it, is Simon Magus. In Acts chapter 8 verse 20, look at it. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Why? Because thou hast thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. He saw the power of God and he brought money to tap. He was sowing a seed for God's power. And Peter said, you perish with your money. That that means the prosperity gospel is not apostolic. It's not apostolic teaching for the church. Where you're told that to get something from God, something must come from you. Historically, Simon the sorcerer is the founder of that, that belief system. And because it is recorded in, in history that the people who are following that doctrine, who believed in his doctrine, they infiltrated the religious group. And that is how it came into the Christian circle. Is that Bishop Benson that I was listening to, who said that in America, American preachers brought Hollywood stars. To teach them the arts of getting money out of people. He said they got Hollywood stars to train them on how to get money out of people. Not the word of God. That's the evil of that prosperity gospel. And that prosperity gospel is selfish. Because the only person that benefits is the preacher. Because you have to keep giving to him so that you will be getting blessed. And if you don't see the blessing, he tells you it's because your cloud is not full. So it's like a mirage. You are giving to prosper, but you never see the prosperity. A few people will say, but I have prospered by giving. No, you didn't prosper by giving. You prospered by the grace of God. If it is by giving, everybody is giving. Everybody should prosper. God doesn't have double standards. The Bible didn't teach us that. The Bible taught us to esteem others. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 9. For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that you through his poverty, T might be rich. Interestingly, this verse has also been twisted. The word grace is the word charis. Charis means to give freely. What is his grace? His grace is that he was rich. For your sake, he became poor. That's the grace of Jesus. He deprived himself to enrich you. So if I actually have the grace of prosperity, I should deprive myself and give to you. But they twist it that because I have the grace of prosperity, you that don't have the grace, deprive yourself of your little and give to me so that my grace will work for you. That's a, a twisting. That's an insult to the scriptures. The grace of Jesus is that though he was rich, now for your sake he became poor that you may be rich. He, he deprived himself to enrich you. So real grace is that the preacher who says he has prosperity as grace, he should come to church with money and distribute to everybody so that members can benefit from his grace of prosperity. Not that members should empty everything, sell everything and bring to him. No, that's not Bible. You don't need to pay God to get anything from God. We give in church because we are responsible sons of God. And we know that God has a mission on earth to reach everybody. So we give so that God's mission can be carried out. We give so that our pastor who ministers and labors over us can be honored in our giving. We give so that the needs of saints can be met. That's why we give. It's not for any increase. All these titans that are making noise all over Nigeria. If titan really works, the richest country in the world should be Nigeria. If titan really works like that, the richest country in the world should be Nigeria. But Nigeria Nigerians are running to, to China where they don't know God. They are running to Saudi Arabia where they don't know Christ. They are running to nations that don't know Christ, but the nations are prospering and nobody there is paying tight. But we are paying tight religiously and yet we don't have roads. I can't travel to Calabar freely. God has no double standard too. He says what he means, he means what he says. If the pathway to prosperity is given, the richest nation on earth should be Nigeria. Nigerians are the best givers on earth. I'm telling you something because I, I know what goes on all over the world. A lot of American preachers can pay anything to preach in Nigeria. A lot of them because they know that in this nation, once you just show them scripture, whether it is clear or not, and it is connected to God, people will give. 
But that day is over. That day is over. Not with men like me that have been equipped with sound knowledge. That day is over. We are raising spiritual sons and daughters across the board who will defend the truth of the gospel. Our God is not a merchandiser. Our God is not an entrepreneur. Our God is a loving father. Who, who gives us all things freely to enjoy. Who has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. What a father. What a father. What a father. I've got a good, good father. 